Sex and Algebra 1, Lesson 12. Hey, good news. We're at the end of our fourth week. Yay, we're making great progress. Our topic today is order of operations. You can always tell when I made up my own topic name. I usually use whatever John calls it, but sometimes his names are just boring and I feel like there's a better way to say it. We're doing more order of operations. We started talking about uh, order of operations. Last time we remembered that it goes like this. Symbols of inclusions, powers and roots, multiplication and division, and I always give you the reminder that here X stands in for a number, here X means multiplication. There are two different kinds of X's, which is a little confusing. And then the last thing we do is add or subtract. This is the way we remember how to do things. And John loves these problems and he beats us over the head with them. What we're, well, I mean, that's violent. Never mind, John would never hurt us. But he pushes us to our limits on these. And what he's doing in this lesson is just making them a little bit harder. We're gonna deal with a lot more parentheses. So, shall we? This is a single topic lesson and there are five problems. So pace yourself accordingly. If you have multiple colors of marker handy, these lessons lend themselves really well to some different colors. I'll use a little green in this one. We look at this, we see, ah, there are symbols of inclusion. So we check those out first. We know sometimes parentheses can just mean multiplying, but there's an easy way to tell. The way that we tell is we identify our parentheses and we look inside. Is there any work to do? Yes, that means we go ahead and do it. If there's no work to do inside of it, then we know our parentheses just mean multiplication and that's a different kettle of fish. We'll get to that in a minute. Okay, so what I do is I copy down the rest of the problem. That's not changing. And I try to keep it lined up and straight. See, I could squish these parentheses smaller because I know I'm just gonna have a single number in them, but I don't wanna do that because as these problems get more and more complicated, we can lose pieces of it along the way. That's really easy to do. So I like to keep it square so that I'll see, oh yeah, I still have all the pieces. Three plus two is five. Six minus three is three. Beautiful, okay, so we've done the first step. Now we look for roots or powers. Yeah, nothing. Now we're ready to multiply or divide. As we've seen, we rarely use this kind of division mark in order of operations problems. Instead, we will have fractions, and there's one later on, so I'll, I'll get to that. Okay, so now we're ready to multiply. We know that in this case, the parentheses now mean multiplication because the, the work has been done inside of them. So there's nothing, we're done with that step and now we know all oh, these parentheses mean multiply. Four times five is 20 minus five times three is 15 and our final answer is five. Guess what? That's the right answer. Yay. Next one. There are so many variations on these problems and John just keeps making them harder and harder. Um, working carefully is important. I mean, it's always important in math, right? But double check to make sure you copied the problem right. And also, don't try to do too much of this in your head. You can do some of it in your head. Um, and I'll tell you an example of what I mean, but just be careful with that. If, you, if you're doing things in your head and you find you're making silly mistakes and getting it wrong, ooh, I just whistled, did you hear? Um, when I said mistakes, you're getting it wrong, that probably means you're carrying, you're trying to carry too much in your head and your brain doesn't like it. So, be careful with that. Here's a tip though. I copied this out of the book exactly the way it was written. I could probably have done that calculation and that calculation in my head so that I was already moving one step forward before I wrote it down. I could have written down minus three times the quantity, let's see, two minus three is minus one, 
plus five is four. I'm climbing on that ladder, right? Through the meadow. Minus six times four plus two. That one for sure I can do in my head. See, that way you save yourself a little bit of trouble. So if you feel like, if you're, if you're getting impatient with these problems, there's a little bump you can do um, to move it along, but just be careful with that. You know what feels right in your brain. Now the parentheses multiplication, there's no roots or powers. We're not doing any of those in this lesson, I don't think. So we kind of can skip over that step and go right to multiply and divide. Here is multiplication. Again, we know it's multiplication because there are parentheses, but there's no work to do inside of them. Minus 12, minus 36, minus three. Whoa, that's a big number, right? So I know that these are all minuses, so I'm moving in the same direction on the ladder. I'm just gonna keep going further in the hole. Oh my gosh, it's gonna be cold and clammy down there. But I can just add these numbers and I know my answer will be negative. 12 and 36, let's see, that's 48, 49, 50, 51. Minus 51, and that's the right answer. Ta-da! All right, two down, three to go. Huh, I can't turn the page. I can do algebra all day long, but I can't turn the pages in my book. Oh wow, this one's really fighting me. There we go. We all have our skills, right? Turning pages today just doesn't happen to be mine. Example 12.3. Um, I was just chatting with one of my other students and she heard me reference just in a random way as I do. Um, in one of my videos, I was talking about the fact that I'd been watching ASMR videos. If you are into ASMR, you have to let me know. Um, we need to find each other. We ASMR people. And so it was really fun to find that out about a student that we have that in common. I'm an ASMR lady. Okay, ready? I'm copying. And I, again, like here, it's minus three, minus three. I could just write minus six if I wanted to push myself. But I don't wanna push myself, you know? This is my idea of fun and I'm in no hurry to rush it. My biggest problem is I'm running out of room right here. Okay, I'm gonna double check and make sure I did this all right. There are a lot of minus signs in this little puppy dog. This is a plus though. Okay, that looks good. Now, we talked last time a little bit about how do you see where the terms are. Um, the multiplication clumps, I talked about addition and subtraction signs being the links. Whoops, this is two separate ones. They're the links between the train cars. That is a really useful way to think about it. Here, I'm saying, no, this should be broken. It should be two separate ones because there's a link there. I didn't see it because I squished it all together. So that sometimes helps us to draw in these arrows. You can do that because that will help you see where the breaking points are. Um, symbols of inclusions, because I don't have my little order of operations list on this page, I'm gonna quickly rewrite it. Again, I want you to be able to see, whenever you have a formula or something like this that you're using, um, make sure that you write it on every page where you're doing a problem like that. You don't have to write it for every single problem, but it needs to be on the page. All right, here we go. We're doing symbols of inclusion. Symbols of inclusion just means parentheses and whatever fancy shapes you might have. So this is minus two still. This becomes minus six. This becomes minus six, minus, that becomes minus five. Notice these are all adding slash subtracting. Right? Okay, that looks good. We're making progress. Now we are ready to multiply. Here we have three factors and then we have two factors. The middle one doesn't have any multiplication. 
All right, two times, these are, I see three negatives, so that tells me my answer is going to be negative. Um, six times six is 36, and then we have to double 36. If I double 35, I get 70. So if I double 36, I must get 72. Now, I'm going to fix this up. I'm going to make that plus five and then plus six. Make sense? So now I have minus 72 and these are plus 11. So I know that my final answer is minus, what, 61, right? Let's see if John agrees with that. Yay, he does. Okay. Number four. Uh, I'm gonna flip my page. It's really long. Ready? This one is a division problem. I'm gonna show you it in the book. It's down here. This is the way division is typically shown in algebra. We don't use a little division sign like we learned before. We show it as a fraction because remember a fraction line always says divided by. So it's blah, 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 divided by blah, blah, blah. Now, the way I like to do these in my in my work, if I were a student, the way I'd want to do them in my homework too, I don't want to copy every one of the lines twice. What I'm going to do is first I'm going to copy the numerator. I'm going to simplify that. Then I'll copy the denominator and I'll simplify that. And then I'll put them together into a fraction. So we want to keep the top and the bottom very distinct from each other and only put them together at the end. Okay, now in order to remember that, I'm putting an N there. That says numerator. That's a reminder to me that once I simplify this first string of numbers, it doesn't mean I'm done. Uh, that'll be a sad moment and I'll cry, perhaps. But that is to remind me that there's more to the problem. Copying plus two, all right? Double checking to make sure I didn't just mess it up. If you like using a different color, feel free. I am gonna just use my same color this time and I'm gonna show, okay, symbols of inclusion or parentheses, that's first. I'll still write this even though I not, know we're not gonna use it. Multiplying and dividing, adding and subtracting. There's our list again. Uh, so I'm doing symbols of inclusions, I'm doing that work first. Minus five plus three is minus two. Here's where my train cars connect. This is minus, no, it's positive four. Here's another train car connection. All right, I like it. Here's another multiplication, here's another multiplication. So now I have minus 10 plus 28 plus two. That all comes down to, let's see, this much is 30 minus 10, that's 20, right? When I get to a stopping place in a problem where I'm gonna need a number of, uh, over later, I like to make a little squiggle under it. That helps my eye find it when I'm done. It's not the answer, but it's part of the answer, so I wanna find that again. Okay, numerator's done. Now we'll do the denominami. I like that he, John usually makes the denominators a little bit easier. Okay, work in the parentheses, we'll do that first. Two plus three plus five. We could put parentheses around that, just to be clear, but I can see that there's nothing to multiply on the outside of those parentheses, so I know I don't really need their, those. There's no minus sign, there's no number, it's just two. So I don't really need to have the um, parentheses at all. They don't do anything for me. All right, we've sim simplified our numerator. We've simplified our denominator. I put them together and look how cute John made that. After all of that drama in that problem, it's just two. Oh, it's really cute, isn't it? All right, we have one more, and it's division again. All right, so we're gonna use this same 
First do the numerator, then do the denominator, then we'll put them together at the end. It just, you don't have to copy so much over and over and over again. I'm not a fan of that. Math is hard enough, we don't have to make it overly complicated. You know? 12.5, simplify. Okay, so here comes the numerator. Again, if you want to do the work in the parentheses as you copy, that's perfectly fine. As long as you're not messing up. Okay, our numerator is easier this time. We will do the work in the parentheses first. We'll notice there is a connecting point. Minus 3 times 2, and I'm going to go ahead and put these together in this pass. Because I feel good about that. This becomes minus 6 plus 5 equals minus 1. It's not the answer to our problem, but it is the numerator. I like that. Uh, now we'll do the denami. It looks like this. Okay, oh look, I forgot to do this again. Symbols of inclusion. That's kind of the focus today, have you noticed? We're not doing any powers or square roots. Multiply and divide, plus and minus. We've already practiced these two. What's new today is that we added the, we added a lot of those. Okay, now I look inside the parentheses and I say, there's no work to do. We just have plain numbers inside of each one of them. So now I know the parentheses stand for multiplication. And I'm ready to do that because I don't have any roots or powers. So it'll be 4. And then those two go together to make a plus 9, which equals 13. Now, before we move on, I want to just say one other thing. Some people say, well, are you supposed to combine those? Or should we cover that up because it's outside the parentheses? Well, look what happens. That means that's the other, this is the other option. It would be four, let's cover it up, minus, there it is. This times this is minus nine. It's the same thing. Okay, so whether you choose to include this minus sign as you find your product, or if you wanna cover it and add it in after you get your product, either way you'll get the same answer. Okay, so we now have I wanna show you something else that's interesting. This is our answer, right? Minus one over 13, which is correct, but it's not the cutest format. As much as I hate floaty numbers, floaty minus signs are often the way we like to see them. So I would rewrite this with the minus sign in front of the whole fraction. I would even put it a titch lower, like this. One over 13 minus. Right, so that it's clear that the minus sign goes in front. This isn't wrong. If you put that on a test, I wouldn't take a point off. I would probably just talk to you about it and say, remember, um, it's just a stylistic issue, but that's the way mathematicians do it. And you're a mathematician, so you know, you might as well roll with the group of us. All right, guess what? Lesson 12 is over. Oh, it was too fast, I'm sad. Luckily, I have two more lessons to teach, so I won't be sad for long, but. All right, that's the end. Hopefully, you're watching this before our scheduled video chat. Remember to check in with me um, at the time we've discussed, and I look forward to chatting with you then. If you're a YouTube-only person, if you ever have questions, you can always email me. My email's on my About page. Um, so feel free to reach out if you're confused, have questions, want to talk about ASMR, whatever. Okay, that's all. Goodbye.